Right, we'll move on now to Physics 1B. And that starts off with waves. It's all about waves to start with. Now, what is a wave? That's the question. Now, it's very difficult to um, explain, really, what a wave is, I think. Um, but to get some idea, like we did in class, we had a slinky spring, didn't we? And you can create a wave on a slinky spring just by moving it up and down here at one end. And what happens is, although you're moving the spring up and down here at this end, that actual wave that you've created at this end will travel along going that way. So what happens is, the wave will travel along, the energy will travel along. The material, in this case the metal, stays where it is. So a wave is something that can transfer energy, but not material. So, waves transfer energy from one place to another, but not material. going to do talk now about how you actually describe a wave. Now we've got a wave here and there are certain parameters, measurements, that actually describe the wave, the features of it. Now the first one I'm going to talk about here is the amplitude. Now the amplitude is the height of the wave from the center, so it's that distance there, that's the amplitude. Also it's the same as the distance there from the center to the trough. So from the center to the peak, or the center to the trough, and that's the amplitude. Now the larger the amplitude, the stronger the wave. So if I have a wave like this, that will be weaker than this one here. That one there is stronger because it's got a larger amplitude. The other parameter is the wavelength. Now the wavelength, is the distance between a point on the wave to a similar point on another wave, on the next wave along. So I've taken the peak there, and then the peak there, that's the wavelength going right the way across there, that distance there. So the distance is actually measured in meters. There we go. That's the wavelength. Similarly, if I took this point here, which is in the middle on this middle point here and looked at the next wave and took that distance there that would also be the wavelength and it would be the same length as this one up here so that wavelength there will be the same there so it's the point on a wave to a similar point on the next wave and that's the wavelength so we've got wavelength and amplitude there Now I want to talk about the types of wave, or the type of waves that make up something called the electromagnetic spectrum. The electromagnetic spectrum. Now these are the waves, the radiation that comes from the sun. So there's all these different types of waves all along the spectrum, all across the spectrum and they all come from the sun. So these waves can travel through a vacuum. They don't need anything to travel through, unlike sound waves. So they can travel through a vacuum and get to us on Earth. Now, at this end here, we've got waves that are a short wavelength. So if I looked at the wavelength there to there, that would be a quite a short distance for these ones here, which are the gamma rays. And the X-rays still short wavelength but a little bit longer than the gamma rays and then we come along to here we go to ultraviolet which is a bit longer still ultraviolet and then we get the visible light and this is what we see when we look at things the things 
what we're actually seeing is visible lights, all the different colors that make it visible light. That's what we see. So this is what our eyes detect. Our eyes can't detect ultraviolet and they can't detect infrared, which is a little bit longer than the visible light. So we go down to infrared, then we go along to microwaves and then we've got radio waves there and they're really quite long. So the use of these different types of wavelength, we do find uses for them. Uh, gamma rays, they're used to treat cancer. Cancer cells don't like gamma rays and you can actually kill cancer cells with gamma rays. It can, they can be harmful as well though. So they can, as well as kill, killing cancer cells, they can also cause cancer. Uh, X-rays, we all know about X-rays, you go to the have an x-ray if you think you've broken bones They're, that's where it's, it's useful to look at bones and things but those two you don't want too many x-rays in your lifetime because they can cause cancer too so these cause cancer if you have too many having one once in a while when you think you've broken something is no problem at all I and mean, it's very useful then we move on to ultraviolet, and this is the sunglasses here, because this is the stuff we get from the sun and that actually causes sunburn. But if you have too much sun, as we all know these days, you shouldn't have too much sun because that can cause skin cancer too. So that can be harmful if you have too much. And that's why you should wear Scott sunscreens on a sunny day. Then we've got visible light. Now visible light is what we see. Generally not harmful unless you have too bright light. So can damage eyes if too bright. If you have too big a flash in front of your eyes or something. Can damage eyes. That's the downside of it. Um, then we move along to infrared. Which as we mentioned it's a way heat can travel. It's one of the ways heat can travel from things. So when it gets emitted or when the heat gets absorbed, there's infrared radiation there. Also used for remote controls. For televisions and that kind of thing, and overhead projectors, infrared. Then we move away along to microwaves, which we use for cooking. And it's the same radiation that's used in mobile phones. It's how mobile phones are com communicate to the uh, masts so can be used for communication now are microwaves harmful it's using the mobile phone too much harmful some people think there may it may be um, and some don't but we don't know is the truthful answer at this moment we don't know Some people say they're causing brain tumours for people that use them too, too often. And for that reason, really, they're not been recommended for young children because their brains are still growing. And the, these radiation tend to affect cells that are growing quite rapidly. It tends to affect them more. So maybe harmful. We don't know. We'll probably find out in a few years' time, though. Uh, and we move along to radio waves and obviously TV and radio, obviously we use those for. So that's the use we put, we put these types, different types of wavelength to use in the electromagnetic spectrum. And what we've got is, as I say, the short wavelengths here. And the longer wavelengths up here. Now, as well as wavelengths, you can also describe a wave by its frequency. Now, this is how many waves there are in a second. Now, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, let's go back. How many waves are in a second? So, a short wavelength, if we have, say, a second here, you would get lots of waves per second. So, that would be a high frequency. There's lots of them every second. Whereas these ones, there are fewer. So, this would be low frequency. So, although it's a long wavelength, it's low frequency. There aren't as many of them per second. So if you have a second of time, there won't be as many of them. 
So high frequency, low frequency. Now frequency is measured in something called Hertz. So frequency measured in Hertz. And it's abbreviated to HZ, HZ. And one Hertz is equal to one wavelength every second or one wave every second. So if I'm my slinky spring here and I made a wave every second, I go one, two, three, four. If I make one wave a second, that would be one hertz. If I had my slinky and I did it a little bit faster and I went one, two, three, four, and I did two wavelengths every second, that would be two hertz. So high frequency means there's more waves per second.